Hello, Mel, the body witch. How are Hello, you? Sarah, witch sister, mm-hmm. earth witch, forest witch, plant witch, all of it, all of it. Hi. It's lovely to meet with you. It is uh, so nice to see you. I am excited for our conversation precisely because we immediately address each other as witches. And so that's how we uh, started our relationship was by bonding over being body witches. And so maybe we should start there. What does being a body witch or witchcraft or why body witchcraft is a thing? um, What does that mean for you? Why why are we body witches? Um, I would say... What it means for me, and I get better at elevator pitching this every time I'm asked, um, just something more pithy. Uh, you know, mm, I have complete responsibility over my experience in this world. And my body is always telling me what I need in order to create the kind of life I want. So my body is both the house of my, not only my own thoughts, but my intuition and connection to higher wisdom. And it is also the mechanism through which I co-create with the reality I'm in. It's a vehicle of transmutation. I, I'm just thinking like I, I I'm just curious where to go because part of me is like okay you are also like a fitness coach and like come at things from a very anatomical level and somehow we like we we start off with like the witchcraft and the spiritual aspect of like this is a vessel for transmutation and I think <laughs> yeah yeah how how does that and I mean maybe maybe we're entering an era where it's less weird for like I don't know for that for that crossover to be in with with practitioners more often um how do you feel about that do you do you see that or I mean you're in New York City I'm in Seattle we probably see a lot of cool like people doing um clinical work with spiritual intuition or something like that you know what I mean I do and you know I use And I am very science-minded and very educated in in advanced biomechanics and physiology. And it is the language I use to connect with people to gain trust. Because the reason I would say I am so successful in my work and growing this brand as the body witch and getting to people who aren't necessarily interested in the trap are like, but you know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, That's it. Like it's it's a shared language for a shared experience that's as real as it can get for us in our anatomy in our bodies where I can help people with like physical pain or performance issues and then when you have gained trust and you show somebody hey I'm grounded like I'm a grounded human being I may be in my private agenda dealing with someone's soul and psychology and helping them to become the version of themselves they want to be and I support that process it's okay to start with the the mundane you know or like in concrete anatomical reality it's a safe place it's a safe container and then if people are like oh well what do crystals have to do with this <laughs> you know or like oh how does my workout help me feel strong for that tough conversation with my boss you know like it can go anywhere but the anatomy is really important. Like you have to have grounded knowledge in order to help people. We're human beings subject to the laws of physics. Until, until somebody <laughs> witchcraft is strong enough to make them exceptional to the laws of physics, honey, that's the basis of, of witchcraft. We're dealing with those laws. So manipulate them, but those are the set of laws we're dealing with. Yeah, there's so much I that you just said that I want to touch on. Um you said you said brand you said the word brand as the body witch and I specifically have thought about brand as because I I, the the soul scout soul scout is the name of the organization that I'm trying to bring into the world (laughs) or the gathering or the essence the soul scouting is the thing that I'm doing and I see it as navigating the essence of the human soul and part of me hates that language 
I don't like that soul work is what I am going to do with my life, but I know that I am and I don't know what that means. And part of that is because the language is ambiguous. Um, and so it forces conversation around the topics and um yeah maybe that's what and and so like body which I feel like if maybe yeah maybe that's what we're doing is we're finding people who want to share that language because I see what you do is something that everyone needs but so many people like are going to be turned off by in for, for same for me like people are like oh you're they see tattoos and they're like oh we already know who you are like you're a witch yeah. you're whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. um like someone called me pagan and didn't even know me. And I'm like, what are you <laughs> like just because of the, you know, the appearance anyway, I'm getting on a tangent, but um, I do find that I guess I'm get, getting into language of how do you see your use of language in your work with people as important, even though you're dealing with the body, the way the perception that people live in the body how do you see language in your with your clients change as you work with them? Um, that's a good question, and I'm also I also want to know why you don't like Soul Scout. Like I, I'm because I love we can it go so there, much, but I also <laughs> want to know like why don't you like that? That's can we can you ask answer my question and then I'll uh -huh. answer it. me first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. I, well, I think because. I don't know what I'm going to do with it precisely. Like the soul, soul scout, like what, what I'm creating, but my work in wanting to help people, I don't, Oh, I don't want people to come to me looking for spiritual wisdom mm -hmm. or advice, or like thinking that the soul work is somehow affiliated with me. So maybe that's why I'm trying to make an organization and not like a mm. coaching program or something because I I don't want that association with soul work to be somehow. I because I, I feel like it's not me. What I'm interested in is like the thing that's happening, the thing that's happening in you and me and and everything here, like the soul that lives in everything, and I don't want to take money <laughs> for something that people think is I have just something to do with because I have nothing to do with the soul I'm just here to learn about it and scout it and understand it and and navigate it I don't know if that's even um, a good reason but I and, and also the unexpectedness of it like I I didn't um my understanding of soul and spirituality was really different growing up than it is now. And so being a soul type person wasn't, I was a scientist, you know, like I was, uh, or, you know, I was going to be a nutritionist and study the mechanics of the human body with science. And like, there's a lot of mechanics that go into, um, obviously I mean, we are that, Oh God, I'm like totally derailing here. But but I learned through nutrition school and science and chemistry with the body and nutrition that like none of that works if like who you are fundamentally isn't like known or something like there's there's the soul is a part of the functioning of the mechanics. And so I see. Yeah, we're talking about this intersection here, I think. But like I I love the name now. Um, but I think I had to work through a lot of what soul was because I thought it was just a gross word or not. A, yeah. Like there's a, there was a misunderstanding and I'm still learning. Um, but I, I think choosing the language and choosing the, the, the conversation is part of it. So, you know, I've chosen it. And so now we're talking about it and that's the point I guess yeah when you said now what like your chemistry is also impacted by your fundamental understanding of yourself as a person I think that that's a big conversation and I think that is part of the intersection that we are entertaining I also understand what you mean in terms of wanting to be careful with how you use language because 
I see us and many other teachers that we know and don't know as part of this like new paradigm of like trying to help people in, in knowledge sharing. And that's how it makes it, it makes it easier for me to position myself as, a, as someone who's sharing information. It's my job to go read the books and take the courses that other people don't have time for. It's my job to gather that and then share it um, in a way that's effective for their goals. And I think that in doing so, both you and I are very aware of falling into old paradigm patterns of gurudam that we're not interested in. Mm. Like I'm not interested in anyone being like, Mel has the answers. I have information that'll help you find the answers that are within yourself, which is very aggravating for most people to hear because they're like, just tell me what to do. And I'm like, I get it. I've been there and I will. There are going to be times where that is what we do, that I will tell you exactly what to do to keep you safe in your body and just help you get through to whatever you need. But that's always only temporary. Like the, the answers are always about always within. It's always about doing work that facilitates people being able to find that in themselves. So yeah. when we talk about language, using language that is in a discipline of science that is provable, repeatable, demonstrable, it's safe. Like, I'm not going to come at somebody and be like, oh, your depression is why you can't move or why your body hurts. Even if that's true, I have to establish a respect and a safety of them understanding that what they feel in their body is real and we can handle it on that level. And then some people, most people need that experience repeated, repeatedly. And then you can start bringing in like the emotional, the mental, the spiritual for the people who want it. And that's it. Yeah, that pro like having that practice is what gives that spiritual growth um, a playground. Or right, that's yeah. maybe not the right word, but yeah, that well, I think the, the ecology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. think Rafe uses the phrase ecology of practice. And so, like, if you do want to have a spiritual growth in one aspect, you know, finding a practice even a physical practice that has nothing to do with it but like bringing that intention into it yeah you know and that's what the embodiment the movement movement is all about is about like choosing things that shift you um, yeah absolutely practices yeah. sometimes i get annoyed when we not you and i in this moment but like we as a collective get very into the navel gazing aspect of this and it's like and what should we call it and was i'm like okay well but when are you going to do it like, mm -hmm. I feel like that's when I get like the New Yorker in me is like, ah, but what are we going to do? Are we yeah. going to do anything about it today? Are we going to change something? Call it whatever you want. Call it whatever the fuck you want because it doesn't matter in the end. You'll figure it yeah. out. You know what I mean? Figure so I'm out. like, yeah. you'll, you'll figure, figure out that the, 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 yeah, that the body, it all comes back to. It'll, it'll, it'll work its way. Um, so with your, with your clients, the question was with your clients, have you seen, have you, um what kind of shifts have you seen like with the kind of work or I asked initially about language but you know you can open that up to, to I, so the language is pretty definitive in the beginning most of the time some people will come to me and be like I, I'm I need to be better myself I want to do coaching work I, I'm with a therapist so I want to learn about ritual you know like whatever auxiliary we'll call that like the extra stuff that's not necessarily extra to me but to most people it's it's like not immediate uh in their practices uh so most of the time it will be about fixing body pain fixing injuries body issues recovering from an illness handling an illness um which i have a lot of respect for uh modern science uh, because you need to have that basis of understanding. If you are going to use anything to assist and support the body, you have to know about how different herbs uh, could be contraindicated for a certain event, you know, issue. You have to have a basic understanding. I don't have the depth of knowledge in herbology that you do or that, that explored connection to nature, but I know enough to not hurt somebody or to go outside of my lane, let's refer you to Sarah so she can run you through. Like there's reality to what we're experiencing and so that language is usually there that concrete anatomy and then and then people start to go do you think 
that I'm stressed and that's why I'm experiencing this physical stuff. And I'm like, well, yes. And there are ways that we can affect that for you. And then they start to, and then it changes from there. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's interesting that you, that that's the question that kind of gets people to get into their body a little bit, because that seems like a good blanket statement for everything in life right now. Like, oh, we're, we're just stressed or like, we're just busy. We're just busy. Yeah. We're just stressed. Stress is like, yeah, like let's get more specific about our language around stress is because, because like, yeah maybe that makes it easy to ignore and because I I remember being asked that in the emergency room one time by my family and rupturing ovarian cysts I was two weeks after my 18th birthday and I'll never forget the nurse was like welcome to womanhood and I was like fuck you fuck you lady that's (laughs) That's, yeah and um because it's it seems so common in the the doctors this whole the whole thing I had that's a whole nother story about how it's just normal to have pain and and stuff um but they were like are you stressed and I was like I I like literally didn't know how to answer that I had no way of knowing I had no way of knowing if I was stressed or not I had no language around it if I did like would those physical cues be indicators for change um and yeah then then yes people in the medical field saying like oh it's normal to have um you know, excruciating pain around your cycle at least a couple times a year. Like, a couple okay. times. Um, yeah. I, yeah, it's a bigger conversation around women and their cycles, and that's something that most women are resistant to, also. But yes, we talk about we need to talk about that. But I think the question, if we're going to talk about the accuracy of language, really should be, hey, do you know how stress is showing up in your body? Because to be like, are you stressed? who's not stressed that's the craziest shit like you don't have to be living in a war-torn country it doesn't have to be that level of stress but you could be like six and experiencing an emotion that you don't know what to do with and that could show up as a feeling sensation in your body that you don't know what to do with and you don't know how to express it and you don't know how to handle it and maybe Mm -hmm. the people around you don't know how to handle it you know which I have a lot of forgiveness for you know it's not like this was common language there wasn't a common language for like this all the time it's very very easy to romanticize uh shamanistic practices and indigenous practices that i come from that that i also use in my work but it's not just about like oh people ancient people and people connected to your thing they understood it's like no there's a complexity there's like the reality of genetics and things that we're learning about as well as the impact of stress emotionally and mentally and spiritually in people's lives. And I think that's why I am good at working with people in the way I do, because I don't, I don't have allegiance to any one thing. To me, I'm like, why wouldn't you bring the best of all the worlds together to, mm-hmm. to help you? That's crazy. Why would you have to have an allegiance to one more than the other? Depends on the situation, depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. My teacher, an herbal medicine teacher says the medicine is in the dose. And I was like, I've loved that. I've remembered that. And it, it applies to so much more than just herbal yeah. medicine and dosage yeah. because like, yeah. or like germ theory versus terrain theory. Like, yeah, good argument. Well, let me show you the other, you know, so. Yeah, you have to have working knowledge <clears throat> essentially as much as you possibly can. You know, if you're gonna, I don't, I mean, I don't know, that's vacuous as a statement. I don't know everything about the human, that's impossible. But, but, but to have a A working knowledge in your field of concentration, like let me be the academic, a working knowledge in your field of concentration. If I consider myself a biomechanist, and that's my perspective in training, that does not guarantee that I can help someone lose weight or uh, look a certain way or uh, feel a certain way, but I do know my biomechanics enough to help heal pain, to help somebody perform something better to help somebody address an issue that with a language that's like hey let's help you understand what's actually happening in your body so you remove the stress of not knowing and then suddenly healing becomes also much more accessible and not so hopeless so yeah knowledge and language are really important i agree 
Yeah. Yeah. Where your knowledge, um, like Venn diagrams with someone else's knowledge, like at least all of the yeah. things that, that, you know, the people you work with in your field can like rub up against, yes. um, I guess to, yeah, that made sense in my head, but didn't make sense out of my mouth, um, but you get it. Um, I, I, I was... think, I think you're saying, and this is the language I would give referral network. Hey, you got something that I recognize somebody else is going to be more efficient at treating than I am. Go over there. And I, I'm also the word multi-potentialite is coming up a little bit, like to learn multiple, um, mm -hmm. to have multiple passions, to have multiple skills that you practice. Um, I think it's something that I am actually going to interview a, a specialist, a multi-potentialite non-linear thinker specialist, um, Perry, who is very cool and a non-linear thinker and like nice. talks to multi-potentialites everywhere and I was like I think that the future like some of these kids that I talk to now I'm like you almost don't have any choice my friends but mm -hmm. like you're gonna have to learn a lot like the internet yeah. like, the internet I, it was my job to understand the internet it is your job to know it <laughs> like, and um that's not true at all and funny but they're figuring out quickly how big and vast the world is I mean like they they have their phones they know like but they have the knowledge and I'm I guess I I, yeah, I think you know before we started recording I was talking about like my hope in scouting the human soul in making interviews and working with kids in nature schools is to provide inspiration that the world can get better mm-hmm and then that by working together, regenerative agriculture, work, you know, like community work, whatever it is, um, that there is hope, even though deep down, I might not have a need for the hope. Mm. Um, I still feel like the work is important enough to learn about, to learn about all these different things, to learn how they overlap, to learn um, the integral ways in which human and like the way I want to work in the world I'm figuring that out and I want to help younger people figure that out too um so that the healing doesn't get hopeless because like you're saying with your clients you just said too like sometimes it can get hopeless when you're like well is it spiritual is it physical is it both where am I when that lost overwhelm feeling well so, and I think what you said is key about we we live in a world technologically financially, uh, in a business sense, just the general infrastructure, if you want to be successful in a mainstream way, meaning let's just make it easy. Don't be homeless, be able to pay your rent consistently and feed yourself consistently. Let's just basic that out. You're better off, like the bar is high in terms of what you need to what you need to be able to do to do that happily as well. Like if you have any fighting chance of being a sort being successful in your survival, but also happy about it, you better entertain the multifaceted you that you are, you know, like that's it. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Who, why, what kind of work um, have you been surprised? Has Hmm. Because I'm asking about like how you evolved to do the work you're doing now. Because you have been able to be that multi multifaceted self, and and why you do it. So your your question. Can you repeat the question one last time so I understand sure. exactly? Um. You. Are the embodiment of what you just described um of like mm -hmm. you have you have survived and thrived and done well and it's because you've been able to pull all these pieces of of your story together and you're learning and create a, a a way of living um that not only is good for yourself but you are also helping other people and by being in their body too and i feel like that that work like why do you still do why do you do that why 
So <laughs> the question is, why do I bother to have this like interdisciplinary approach and then try to keep bringing it to people and being like, hey, you should try Yeah, this. well, hey, it, se it seems it seems like so much easier. You know, I, I'm going to do that shitty thing and be like, sometimes on Facebook, um, but like, <laughs> but sometimes on Facebook, <clears throat> I'll see friends with families and or or like with like their jobs and it's it seems I'm just like god something in me almost wishes I wanted a normal life like like a job that was just I knew that that's what I wanted to do and I knew that that thing would give me a good retirement and that at the end of it I could be, like like be taken care of Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's possible for like in some sense, but I also didn't choose it. And I, and I see, um, I'm inspired by you in that way of like, uh, here's the, here's the work that I am, you know, <laughs> and like, <laughs> this is what I, I'm like, whatever yeah. I am needed. Yeah. I, I love that. And, and that seems like something that a lot of people, other people, not just myself are inspired by the ability to be skilled in all these different ways and create a way of living from it that actually sustains you. And um, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for that. That feels like a huge compliment, a, a huge, like, you know, celebratory reflection. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's amazing. And um, it's something I'm trying to do. And, and there's all these ways of doing it, I suppose, but um it's kind of that entrepreneurial spirit, but not yeah. at all. Like, like, you know what I mean? Um, no, I think, I think it is. Um, I think that <laughs> like, if you're asking like, why, like why I even bother do this and try to bring it to people. And, and when you were talking about having purpose and like, but also wouldn't it be nice if that purpose was a simple job? I, and I don't, I don't want to go somewhere in the conversation that you don't want us to concentrate on, but this kind of brings us back to what we were talking about in terms of like why you need to be multifaceted. That mm -hmm. sort of like 1950s to 80s Americana dream of like, you're going to have a job that you can have for 30 years and you're going to retire on that. That shit's not common. That is not the norm anymore. That's just not available. So I'm like, yeah. you better figure it the fuck out, kids. Like, you know, and I think that what you're doing like I see you at your young age because I'm what at least 10 years older than you I think I think you are exactly 10 years older than am me. I exactly you're 31 I think so no I turned 30 this month 30. So, okay so I am I am 41 and I and I'm inspired by you because I'm like wow if I had half the balls and the knowing to hear my own authentic desire the way Sarah does like where would I be and I don't spend too much time on that because that's pointless and I want to I don't have a time machine but I see you doing it the same but earlier and it takes a lot of courage to be like I'm not happy doing regular shit I'm not happy on that track and I am going to choose to prioritize my happiness not just the comfort of people around me feeling that I'm secure. And that is, that's, that's hard. That's still a struggle for people even now, even though it's more common yeah. side hustle, entrepreneur, you know, more <laughs> passionate entrepreneur. That's like a thing now. It's like, yeah, it's so hard. Yeah. I think yeah. that, an that answers like, um, yeah. Cause I was thinking as you started to answer, I'm like, well, actually it's a two part thing. Like why, why did you not choose that regular job? And that answers that because like, Hey, it's getting impossible. Cause I'm also like side hustle, work for other people, work for myself, doing the weird, like, and I yeah, tried. That, that's just reality. I, I tried. I had like 50,000, I had 50 jobs. I was in, I was a buyer in a health food store. I was an assistant buyer in fashion, which was my dream. And I did it in New York city. And it was horrendous. And then I went to grad school for one day. And I sat in class and the voice inside went, nope. And I went home hysterical crying because I was like, I just want my thing. I want my direction. And <laughs> my friend kept saying, if you could do anything, anything, what would it be without limitations? And when I finally let myself have that space, it was what I'm doing right now. Oh, 
And I just thought it was so impossible that I didn't even entertain it as a possibility. They were like, just mm -hmm. do that. You're doing it anyway. That's the thing that I want people to know who here, especially the young ones. Whatever it is you're trying to hide, it's coming out in this. Oh, thank you. I just got chills. <laughs> it's coming yeah. out. Of you're doing think, it's gonna happen. You're thinking about it, you're entertaining it, you're you're doing it with a small group, whatever you're, it is. You're, you're storytelling it. it, you're imagining it, you're, you're doing yeah, it. You're doing it. I and and so pay attention. Pay attention. To that pay attention and recognize that there is a malignancy to trying to repress it it's mm -hmm. it's not smart it's not a smart move i'll say i'll say well first um i definitely do that to people 10 years younger than me like oh if i had only especially now that i'm in the field that i'm in in outdoor education i meet some of these younger people and i'm like oh but if i would have known about this or certain like i was practicing flips uh parkour summer camps a counselor for a parkour summer camp and i was practicing flips with this little uh what i say little kid um but a 10 year old not that little um and they were like Sarah, don't be afraid. I was, I was nervous, you know? And I yeah. was like, Hey, I haven't been doing gymnastics since I was five. Cause she was bragging about, I did gymnastics since I was five. And I'm like, I started at 28. Like, I, right now. <laughs> I'm like just now like trying to do parkour things. And so it's, where am I going with that? I, I think it's natural to what that's part of it you're doing it anyway part of looking forward and looking yeah, back it's like if i if i was like this then and like that all together isn't helpful um yeah like i i am so amazed at the young women in particular who i see like you where i'm like like sometimes i gotta put the ego or soothe my ego for a moment and be like it's okay we all have a path thank god they're here thank you <sighs> god they're here oh my god i've been rarely really nourished by that too because i like i i had a similar experience with grad school i i had two separate semesters started and quit after i got my bachelor's thinking that i would do a master's for two different things at two separate times yeah and yeah. was devastated also saying i wish yeah. i just had my thing so yeah. desperate to look for it and thinking and real and had that like well had that same thing well if I could do anything what would it be and that just opened my mind it just opened my mind to my own mind I guess because it was like holy shit I've been lying to myself where well, else have I, I been lying to myself or like well, you that's, know. that's just it like when I say it's not smart and it's malignant to try to repress that voice you know sometimes you have to repress it for survivors survival is Maybe. oh so helpful yeah for sure you know like I, like I there was you know there were other really dark times in my life where like being the body which wasn't available but I was doing the things anyways mm -hmm. and so I think it's very easy to also look at people at any particular like snapshot of us in this moment and people will be like wow they really got together and they're doing great and that's true and then there's going to be a moment tomorrow in a later today where we take a deep dive and we're like <laughs> And then you just come up like and it's like we're just always yeah. you're always in process of if you decide to be and this is what I like to think you're always in the process of becoming the fullest version of yourself if you dedicate yourself to that process it's never ending so don't get attached to like the way you think it's gonna look and that's um, where the witchy stuff comes up because I've been having a lot of past and future conversations with versions of myself oh my god yeah yeah yeah. and so I'm like oh like things that I was doing that I was repressing but that were coming out in secret or by myself or like I look back and I'm like oh that's why you were doing it you were you were creating anchors in whatever space time continuing you were in and then you were calling forth that future future part of you it's like yeah I do that shit all the time that's normal and I'm like totally. oh, okay I get it now I get it I get it oh that's I I think now about like man what do people who don't know about <laughs> witchcraft or I, I know I'm like that's a like, sad way to live like 
or like plant meditation or like man people who don't talk to the trees who do they talk to when people like irritate them to the end of the earth yeah like like, where where where, where where's your respite you know when people that's that was actually part two of my other my my question earlier was um like yes you've created your own work and like this is the work of like oh i don't even know what to call us like people who i don't know it's some weird blend of like fuck the system and i can (laughs) and like i believe i believe in the goodness of the world and so i'm going to create from i'm going to imagine the best thing that i can do with my life and the best thing that the world needs and and hopefully fill as many gaps along the way as i can and try to have some joy in there too and and we were talking about this earlier like um that hope that hope for it being better like overall like the work that we do is in the face of something terrible like I have this little thing in my room I do the work because I've seen something beautiful I do the work because I've seen something ugly yeah yeah um and it goes on but yeah I don't want to put words in your mouth because I want you to to speak to what you said before we started recording which was um like hey here's how I feel but here's why I do the work anyway and I and I resonate with that and I think that's why like I had this project idea I don't know what I'm doing with these interviews by the way um but the 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 humanity is worth saving whether that's the that's the series name or just the mission or the essence of why I got started um comes from that essence of like I really do believe that I have that we are worth it and I hate, and I don't, and I, and I, th- I think I believe that because I actually don't believe that. Oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And yeah. so my yeah. question now is like, we do yeah. the work in the face of this. Why? Why? <laughs> because you know, when the when the when the people are are, and when I'm over the people, and I'm over yeah. the, I'm well, I'm never over the trees. But like when it's all, right. <laughs> fuck all. Why yeah. do we do it? Why do you do it? So, like, I have this pillow that I think people think is really funny. I <laughs> fucking hate people. And it's pretty sequins, <laughs> right? Like, um, and I, ca- I refer to myself as a misanthropic healer. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to give a, a different perspective because I see you and I see so much light and joy and that drive to embody the light because there or to be the hope when there is no hope wherever it comes from I don't always know where it comes from for us but I see that and I'm like grateful grateful because there's a balance because I don't have that I often feel I often feel (laughs) so much in a really immediate way that like even just talking about it now makes me want to cry like there's, it is very, I mean, I, for sake of time, I'm not going to explain a lot of what I'm going to say. I'm just going to say it. And if it doesn't make sense, like you can stop me and be like, what are you trying to say? Um, Go for it. Good. Thank Go for you. It. And I don't feel like I'm alone in, in saying this. It is so easy and immediate for me to connect to suffering in the world around me. Uh, and it, And I would say like several times a day, it just will really sometimes take my breath away or, or enrage me. And I'm okay with not being the Buddhist. Like I'm cool with the Buddha and the Buddhist teachings. I'm like, right on brother. That's not me. Like I'm, I'm, I respect, but I don't deny the fact that when I am in witch mode, right? However people want to use that word. I am representing a particular part of a divinity I have connected with. And that is often a very, much of it is death. Like I work very heavily with death as an actual entity who I speak to and guide me. Where do I go next? Which is crazy to people because they're like, you fuck with death? And I'm like, yes, like it's real. It's going to happen to all of us. So I'm asking her, And sometimes I'm laughing with her and sometimes I'm held by her. And sometimes I'm like, tell me where to go next because ultimately that's where we're going. And she doesn't frighten me. She brings me joy. Like I'm working on even connecting to death and sex magic and in my own self-pleasure, which 
is farther away. But so the reason I bring all this up is because when it's very easy for people to hear me sound cynical and disenchanted, because I am. Because many times throughout the day, I fucking hate people and I hate humanity. And then I recognize that so much of the beauty that I love in this world, including the preservation of nature, is also a human endeavor. So it doesn't really matter how I feel. I have tools and I have skills and I have information to share. I cannot control the outcome. I have ideas that are very bleak and dark about how all this is gonna go in the next 50 to 100 years. And it still doesn't matter. What am I gonna do with the time I have left now? So when I think of that and I'm like, I could get really overwhelmed by all that, which I have no control over. So it's pointless. And I think, uh, what if I die today? What if I go do my laundry after our call, which I'm planning to do, and I get, I slip on a banana peel and I hit my head in a certain way and I fucking die. That's it, done. Part of me is going to be so relieved because I can't wait to be out of this ride. Like, I'm done. Like, I keep telling the powers to be like, I help from above from now on. We're not coming back. I don't want to do this shit again. Just suck it. I'm out of here. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to represent us. I'm going to bring the light. I'm going to do all the shit. I'm going to try to alleviate suffering. I know I have skills for a reason. I will not squander that. But when I'm out, I'm out. So there's like a part of me that's like, ooh, that's going to be nice. That'll be cool. Um, and there's another part of me that's really upset about the idea of dying soon and dying at all because I'm human, where I'm like, I have so much more work to convey and help to give to people because the amount of suffering around us is so crushing. And you can either let it consume you and you become part of that abyss or you stare into the abyss and you go, what am I gonna do with this? That's, I mean, like, I don't think there's another experience. Like, I can't imagine anybody else being like, I have an alternative experience to life where, I, where honestly, I'm not like, are you shoving your head up your own ass? Like, are you not paying attention? Like, do you not ever take a moment to stare into the abyss? Well, go you. But that's what the, some of us are doing and we're like, fuck, okay. Let's make the most of it, folks. <laughs> and that's it. That's my spiel. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good spiel. I, and that's what, that's, that's <laughs> what I want to talk about. Like, I, and think I, I, because, fuck. <laughs> I, I can't think COVID really fucked me up. I think COVID really, like, broke me well, and up, yeah I think it fucked all humanity up I think it fucked up the world and we don't even want to talk about it because well a just the fact that we're just all bloody back to normal I guess not <laughs> enorm- not everywhere not everywhere not um, everywhere no no but um and so, yeah it's it's I guess for me, I should just say that that was the moment where I had such intense anxiety and I knew I was safe and all my trauma education, all my body, like training and everything. I was like, I'm okay, but the world is not. And that is the uh, like, And so I know now what that is like that, that mm-hmm. collective yeah. pain. I'm like, Oh, I feel it now. And where you can distinguish your own. I can distinguish it. Pain. Right. And, and so that skill I'm thankful for, but like, but now I can't turn it off. And I think I could, I could before I didn't have the language before to distinguish, you know, and I could, I'm very keen to the suffering that's immediately around me. Um, It's hard and we're, you know, are wired that way, by the way, that some of the work is like, that's part of the survival too. When you're so empathic, like you are already, and you're already plugging into that. You have to have several modalities in place to then disconnect recharge go back in because for some of us it's not a fucking choice for some of us it's like i just feel it all the time all and then try time. to shake it off and move on yeah and i and i haven't i haven't been able to i think i mean before then too of course but but since since the beginning of like yeah. the world is locked down the world is suffering together and i think that was a moment and i remember even talking about it like we had this opportunity right to like reckon with the moment and that moment for me has never left my mind I'm just like okay let's get to work that's kind of my response and yeah I I could uh yeah because but but even now I'm like as I'm rashing out I'm like is is this still coming from this place of like because 
I hate it all, you know, like, because it is so painful. Like, why? Um, yeah. And, and you do have to be aware because there is a, going back to your body, mm -hmm. it impacts you. And then if, when the physical impact is so intense that you can't function and you can't do the work that you want to bring to help people, that's pointless. That's not compassion. That's not empathizing or that's empathy burnout. That's just being, and now it's wallowing and it's emotional right. cutting. Like, okay. Like I can feel that. And then what am I going to do about it? I got, if I'm going to do something about it, great. If my, if my desire in life is to be plugged in and have it affect me and, and just like wallow in that and cry about it all day, then great. I can do that too, but it's not what my work is. And so I got to pick up the pieces. I got to figure out ways. Yeah. to. Do you have together. any, Mm -hmm. I, I, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I know we're getting up on close to time here. And so I'm, I'm thinking of ways I'm thinking practically now. I'm, um, mm -hmm. and, and also like someone with, um, oh, did I freeze? Okay. You froze for a moment, but you're back now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a lot to learn. Right. And so I'm curious. I think I am at the end of an, emo an an emotional, like empathic burnout phase. I mean, you know, the last year of my life, I've kind of I've been in um, a class where that was sort of the point. So a lot of soul searching yeah. and yeah. big yeah. life of people of upheaval, um, road of trails. I think it is is like the in the hero's chairman, like just knocking down the monsters just one at a time. Um, how when people yeah, do exactly. that, which which I think is essential. And it can lead to that wallowing. How do you get out? Um, and I suppose that question, that wasn't even the planned question <laughs> because that question immediately I'm like, well, it depends on how far in you fell. You fell, you know, did you fall in the ditch or did you fall in the chasm? Yeah. yeah, you know? yeah like, yeah, did yeah. you stare too long in the eyes of the dragon and become yeah. the dragon? You know, like, <laughs> I do. I do love that question because there are, there are, for me, there are so many ways there are in a way that when I'm asked this, like when I, like when I go to a podcast, like help you avoid burnout. Right. And then they're like, take away. And I'm like, <laughs> listen to, okay. Like, here's what I'm going to tell you. I do. Um, right. Sometimes I need to, I feel it and I feel disconnected from purpose. And then I turn on a uh, song I like and I dance and I become a certain version of myself and that's what I want okay or sometimes I burn some herbs that's what, okay okay that helped uh I'm gonna do some raking clean out my house that helps oh I need to go through my paperwork and create order oh when I create order in one aspect of my life the order flows everywhere else oh maybe I should wear a certain jewel you know jewelry and go hug a tree today okay maybe I should talk to somebody but really I just want to move my body like you know I'm gonna smoke weed and do laundry that's that's my break that's how I'm gonna get out of this oh, I'm gonna go smoke weed and do laundry I'm gonna just dedicate myself myself it's like the weed and chores are like the modern day sweep the floor draw water from the well that's like what we do yeah. so there isn't a time where I'm not constantly elevating my vibration which uh, I know that language can sound so annoying to be fair but it's true like if I feel myself and I'm not repressing and I'm not pretending that I'm not feeling I'm just processing I'm just processing so I just let it move through me so it doesn't get stuck just oh what are you feeling okay does it and sometimes the process is like I acknowledge my feeling or my thought and that was enough and sometimes it's I need a ritual around this I need to rage around this I need to do like when you talk about the pandemic I have so many moments like many people of having that visceral memory of what it took to survive that in my circumstances everybody had their own circumstances and I remember manic hour and a half dance sessions with myself every night and you know that I recently recognized as me dancing with this version of who I am now where I was like, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I'm calling it in. And then I look, look back and I go, hey. And sometimes I go back there to that really dark, scary time and still see her dancing. And I hold her, I dance with her. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're good. We got this, don't stop. And then I try to open that into the future and go, hey, where am I dancing to now? Do you see me? I'm here, tell me where to go. And so like, 
there really isn't a moment where I'm not constantly like in ritual, just mm. moving out of some depth, which I know sounds ridiculous. And it is. And some people are like, aren't you exhausted? All I can tell you is no, because this is who I am. I don't expect it to be what, uh, what everybody else does. Everybody has a, their own path. I, I can relate to that. Totally, hundred yeah. percent. I and then you're saying like you're constantly raising your vibration. I I think yeah because like every like it gets constantly being depleted. Um, you know, like I I take in, yeah, I, I seek out what what will lift me up because it seems like there's enough to lay me down. It seems like my job to pull myself upward. Um, maybe I don't know. Yeah that's what i'm decaying and yeah. so i mean there is like this down i don't know i think about like like the directions of, oh i should laura we need to talk to laura about Le bon. yeah um, but, oh my god <laughs> yeah like there's something about like that down and decaying like we're going we're just going down and so like this the striving up and like building up um and i love the spiral like you you were describing of maybe you didn't even use the word spiral you said dance and turning back and i <clears throat> yeah um, yeah, yeah there's something I, I there's something clicked with me with the triple spiral recently well it spirals in general is that like it is is that that you turn in on itself right and you will revisit and, and, and go, you will oh. yeah and so i it's just like everything comes back to the spiral and i'm always like getting revelations from the spiral yeah. about like how you actually are turning like you're you're going what is actually the wrong direction you just have to trust that it'll take you back in the way that you're trying to go. And then even once you, yeah, I don't know. Wait, <laughs> but, um, but uh, also from... the other, the other tool that I wish people had that I am really passionate about bringing forward in my work more and more now is pleasure. How are you pleasuring yourself? Mm. And I do it with a lot of like intense orgasmic practices. And I have like, sometimes like tonight is a crystal dildo night, you know, like, and then that all cleanse my system from the inside. Like, <laughs> But it can also just be like, I give myself a nice foot massage, you know, like pleasure in your body. It's so hard, you know, we're being inundated by messaging about what you should be and how you're not good enough. And then you start bringing in social injustice. Like, do you not fit what society says, whatever your society says is successful or worthy? Mm -hmm. Are you a person of color? Are you marginalized in another way? Are you hiding? You know, like it's, you have to constant. And I do think, and this is where it's okay. People will move away from me. And then the people who stay, stay. It is my belief that it is our personal responsibility to constantly elevate ourselves into a better place. If you want to see this world be what it, like, be the change. Yeah. You know yeah. what that takes? That takes fucking work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your Even... responsibility. I, I 100% and I think that's why I love meeting humans who are like well here's what I'm gonna do because I do think that like to, to see to make the world the fit the well society it has it has a message like there's a societal layer but I think I from my observation in my ears that I'm always listening um Seriously. that is such a blanket statement for like not doing the work well, society is this way. And so I have to butt up against that. But it's like, actually, if we are envisioning beyond society and the world that we went, we, went, we can actually envision, the, be the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible, um, according to Charles Eisenstein, um, that has to, society, you know, like you have so much, this is all, I, this is the most power I have, the body in the body. Like this is this is my wisdom. This is also the tool for. I don't think it's seeing a, that change. Don't think it's yes. a what? I don't think. I'm sorry. I, I just the thought popped in my head. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I don't think it's a coincidence that so much and my own work too is being driven in this way. That self love, explicit, demonstrable self love. Yep. Is the trend social media and coaching and wellness and sexuality and sexuality practices that now I'm going to be teaching like all that stuff. That's because if you want to be what you said, I wish it was so beautiful, be the better world that our hearts know is possible. You have, but to look to RuPaul, if you can't love yourself, 
True that. How the fuck you gonna love other? You know, like it is yeah. your job to love the fuck out of yourself. Teach us love- RuPaul. Teach us Ru- RuPaul. <laughs> Every person who's ever been oppressed, teach us the way. Self fucking love. Self love. Self love. We do. To everyone who's ever been oppressed, God, I think that. I mean, like we. It is time to lift up those marginalized voices and the people because that because they know what it's like to to turn in on the spiral, you know, and like to to not know and to and to like all those the road. Talk about road of trails trials same thing because yeah. it's because <laughs> you're doing you're going down it's I mean the lies the embedded lies I and I and and, and I and I recently have been thinking about self-racism mm-hmm. people yeah. of color no yeah. and you know as a white person I'm I'm like I I feel ignorant for saying this but I have not thought until recently learning about it about self-racism and that being an internal struggle which is god if even saying that i'm like ignorant white bitch okay, like you know, but but then the other part but but the, <laughs> but my, I'm, I'm coming around with this thought because because i believe such horrible things about my being um right, that were right. put there by religious dogma yes. and so the and it makes sense i mean that just the suddenly it was like the oh my god these people's internal struggles because of the societal things that they're told to and even in and even in the more subtle ways that that like I will forever I will I will be working through this shame in within me forever I will now I and I have I ah, I the suffering god well that's where like especially with my my woke white women friends who I love very much for their allyship (laughs) and desire for for more awareness or they're like, how do I not know? I'm like, part of the healing is not is an understanding that you're in a position where you're not expected. You wouldn't be expected to know that. I don't know the intimacies. Do I know the intimacies of racism in as a Latina woman? Sure. Who came from a home with mommies? Yes. I know a lot about bigotry and prejudice in an external sense. Um, I'm Mexican and Puerto Rican. Do I know about the internal? racism that happens the intro racism within you know ethnic groups. yeah of course do i know intimately the struggles that like my gay friends have until they tell me no why am i gonna i'm not gonna know that mm-hmm. but all i have to do because i will never know thankfully and be intimately embedded in everyone's shame because then we wouldn't function but yeah, what true I, right like oh i don't know thank you but like it's like people who are like, I can see auras, can you? And I'm like, no, thank God. Like, I don't want, I don't want the information that quickly. But <laughs> I've got enough. Thank God, I can't see that. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm good. I've got, I can talk to trees. I'm good. Like, I can just, like, plug into the world right now. But I would say that it's enough to, here's where people, I think, get it wrong. When they have an aha moment, and then they don't have the domino effect to be like, Oh, that means every single person in my society or people around me are handling stories of shame that I can't even imagine. Yeah. That's it. Once you get that lesson, your humanity and your compassion, your willingness to be less judgmental or to understand that you don't have all the pieces, even if you're ignorant of all the pieces, just know you don't have all the pieces of the story is more than most people have. And there, there's this. I think other layer that I could go on where it comes from, but like the desire to, it's not the desire to fix it, but the desire to think that it's my responsibility to help everyone. That is, I mean, that's just, uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's just silly, but, but I'm just naming that as like, what, what is this feeling of like, I, Oh, it is my job you said this earlier like but it is my job I because I want to have these conversations right Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of other people do and I feel like I am starting I am I have found the lick of bravery to get the things going in the direction that I want so I know that that will slowly lead to more conversations more brave conversations right um and more learning which is the point but because I think I feel like it 
is my job to do at this point is to set the table. Like I, I kind of have that image in my mind. Like I'm going to set the table so that the right voices, so that the right voices, God, <laughs> um, so that voices that need to come together can. And that's how I, I feel now. Is I, that like, I, I get that. And I admire it. And I think that I, you know, we're all learning, not all of us, some of us are learning to identify the platforms and privileges available to each of us, along with the oppressions of it that are available and have been dealt to each of us. We all have a mixed bag of that and learning to leverage what we can do. And I, I admire it. Listen, you know, like, let's not pretend that you don't have certain privileges and distinctions in the world as a white woman, as a pretty white woman. That's, but like, you can use it. Like I had to get over so much shame in the fitness industry because people would be like, oh, but you're pretty, you can get anything. And I'd be like, that's disgusting. And I don't want to be part of that system. But now I'm like, okay, you know what? I get pretty privilege assigned to me, whether I feel, whether I see or not, whether I think it or not, that's my shit. I live in a society that assigns me privilege and a platform based on this. So I'm going to use it every time to be like, Hey, check this out. I'm going to talk about health and wellness, right? Because you, you're like, I want to have what she has, whatever the fuck you think I have. And I'm going to be like, do you love yourself? Like, I'm going to do everything I can to pull people into coming and be like, do you love yourself? Tell me how you loved yourself today. Did you fucking, and I'm so militant about it now. Where I'm like, dare you speak about yourself like that in my presence or in your own presence? Disgusting. Do better. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the monastic Buddhist beating people. Yep into self-love like it's and I'm cool with it I'm like all right it's not I'm cool with it too as your friend I say I appreciate it because like I forget that self-compassion piece all the time I feel like I had a spiritual awakening listening to Kristen Neff's book on Mm self-compassion and like I just all these things made so much sense and they just clicked on like how I really was doing my best and like and how I and I was I felt such soft compassion for myself for like a good couple of weeks. And so maybe I need to go listen to the book again because it takes that reminder. So thank you for being the reminder in people's <laughs> lives. Reminder. Like it takes that, you know, because yeah. like the, the motivation and the inspiration doesn't come naturally. And it doesn't yeah. like the self-love doesn't come naturally with all of the I mean, I I listening to you say that, like, yeah. <laughs> I want I can lean into it even if I don't feel it you know I, I guess it's a war cry right? it's, it's a war <laughs> cry and I have this I know and I and I and I know I have very militant expressions and beliefs and I'm and like I said I'm cool with it and it's not for everybody there are plenty of other people in different expressions and I was talking to a, a guy friend of mine who I love dearly who needed some uplifting and I was like how are you loving yourself what music do you listen to because he's very musical and he's, and he's a musician. I said, what music do you listen to to remind yourself that you are a beautiful man worthy of love and, and your own love, first of all? And he was like, well, I love my jazz and jazz brings me calm. And I was like, no, 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 no. What music do you listen to that literally says to you, you're, you're amazing. And I know it's hard to remember, but you're amazing. And he was like, well, and I was like, no, you don't. So your job is to go listen to some Lizzo. And he was mm-hmm. like, I don't know if I want to. And I'm like, you don't have to like it. You need to hear. This is like a spell <laughs> being cast out loud. There is no stronger message of self-love in our society than from a fat black woman screaming amazing music into this world, into the void of, I picked myself up today because I love myself. Oh, I did it again. Oh, I did it again. I'm like, Mm -hmm. that's, that's the spell casting you need. So you can have, you can have jazz, you can have whatever you want, but you need to have the voice of somebody who has been in places that are so dark and unavailable to you. You can't understand going, look at how I love myself. Then you can be like, okay, well, she can do it. I can do a little bit more. I was like, there are, we're not, you know, there are some people who are bringing this forward. Like, go listen and then be like, thank you. Good reminder. And I know people are like, it doesn't have to be that way. Yes, it fucking does. Yes, it does. Because, okay, for the people who are like, oh, I don't think it has to be like that. Are you loving yourself? Do you have established self-love practices? You fill yourself up with your own juiciness every day. You know how to, you don't accept (laughs) bullshit from people. Okay. Well, when you, when you create that coaching course, let me know. 
And in the meantime, go listen to some Lizzo. Like, you know, so. I love, I love that you're like, that is like a spell. And it, it is. is. It is. It is like the music that like makes you go, fuck yeah. I can like, do what anything. Like, what inspires that like? <laughs> Yeah. Yes. You know, like yeah. I can't even tell you how many times in the pandemic I would be crying in my apartment and I'm about to teach and I don't want to, I don't want to teach. I don't want yeah. to be the body witch. There ain't no body witch here. And then I would put on Cardi B and I'd get into my ghetto. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm the baddest on the street. I'm the fucking, this is the fucking. And then I'd be like, hey, you know, because, and then it serves a community. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, yeah, like, there, there has to be some militancy around self-love because if the, look at the world. Yeah. That's it. Done. Done. I, oh, there was this, <laughs> I used to, back when I, back when I used to listen to Pandora before I was <laughs> converted to Spotify. 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 <laughs> I was like, why did it take me so long? But I heard this uh, Pandora ad one time that pissed me off. It was like, <laughs> It was like joy is an act of resistance or joy is an act of, yeah, I think that's what it said. Joy is an act of resistance. <clears throat> I was like, what kind of marketing propaganda <laughs> bullshit are you trying to do to convince people that joy is something that they need to like work for like a fucking rebellion or like military, you know? <laughs> And now you're like, and now oh. I'm like, man, it takes an act of resistance. <laughs> it takes real work. It takes real prioritization. It takes real community help and support and love and, and like asking for what you need. And it takes boundaries and it takes good friends and, and it takes knowing yourself and feeling yourself and, and knowing. Yeah yeah like that that being able to tap into the fact that you know that you are the baddest bitch like you you already know that you just need little lizzo to remind you we forget we forget forget. and we need people to be like oh you forgot you're a bad bitch that's okay let's get you back into your bad bitch vibe let's let's get you to let's get you to the next coven meeting you'll be reminded (laughs) Yeah. people want to be like it's not like yes yeah, come up with a better system when you're doing the work and you're like no i'm good then i'll listen to you and until then you do what whatever is available you start trying everything you can to inculcate that self-love i Anywhere. love that you come up with a better system yeah because we can't i can't think of one than like community support like love have and it's talked about it's not like people don't talk about it that's why those songs are sung that's why there are covens that's why as much as I'm like burn down all organized religion which is like a personal feeling that I wouldn't actually legislate on everybody calm down but like (laughs) you know but that's why communities and churches and and wherever your temples are community matters but you better fucking make sure your community is trying to shine the bad bitch light on you and not Mm -hmm. tell you how to be in a small way those yeah. communities I will tell you I have a big problem with don't tell me how to and be. they're out there and they're subtle that's the majority existy. that's the mm-hmm. majority and the majority of people are trying to get you to play small to keep themselves comfortable and that's death that's death that's that's and so that's even it's even more than the community support piece then I mean it's 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 even even in the community can you do you have it within yourself yeah because 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 without that without the community you still got to be able to pull it pull it out of yourself and if that community goes bad and you don't know and you don't know any better you you better have your piece of yourself to know to you know to not be god there's all these layers yeah no it's it's rough it's not for the dancing it's the, all the spirals all the spirally spirals <laughs> and i love when my therapist once said to me once said to me this work is not for the faint of heart yeah it's not okay like that's that's strength and so like yeah you better fucking love yourself and I have no room or patience for people who are like I don't it's hard yes it's hard and we're gonna do it anyways because look at the world it's on fucking fire do you like what if Putin had self-love and Lizzo in his life we probably wouldn't be where we are now I'm just putting it out there like (laughs) (laughs) quote of the interview (laughs) what if Putin had self-love and and if he was listening and 
And people are like, he's listening to too much Lizzo. No, the kind of self-love that fills you and you want to share with and uplift others. Mm. Not narcissistic insecurity that you have to take power from others to make yourself feel good and safe. That's garbage. That's not love either, in my opinion. It's not love. My, my first... Um... I've been poisoned by Paul Linden in my language around power and love. And um, so yay, my, Paul Linden. yay, Paul, that was my first interview I published with him um, was about trauma, power and love because those three, well, trauma, those three things are very misunderstood, but mm-hmm. love, love, especially is like, that actually is the answer. That is, I know it's so, it's so cliche and I want to vomit it's whenever I think so, about it. It's, I know it's like the, the soul answer. word. It's like, the, <laughs> like the love word. It's like, oh, damn it. It's awesome. like good. And can we just talk <laughs> for a quick second before, cause I know we have to wrap up, but like, we want to talk about demonstrated self-worth and self-love from a body, which Paul Linden, who every time he presents will be like, like, Hey, I'm shaky. This is the problem. This is just the way my body presents, but I'm fine. And I have work to do and I have things to teach you. And I'm like, yep. Yeah. He starts out. I'm, I'm here to shake things up. And then like, that's, that is self-love that's self-acceptance. That's, I still am worthy to present this, even though you may not understand, like he, mm, yeah, he calls it, he calls it gallows humor. Um, and I think that like, to me that I would call that sacred humor because Same. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. And I was thinking of all these different types of, but, but it's the ability. I think humor has this um, my transcendence workshop with embodied yoga principles that you were at, I think. Yes. And I taught, and like how, how like you can be in this, in this place and maybe it's the dark, maybe it's the chasm, maybe it's the void, maybe it's, you know, just melancholy, but like humor seems like one of the few things that can just pick you up and just transcend you completely into somewhere else. Because like, what, (laughs) I was about to say, what is funny? Because I mean that in like a meta way. Yeah. Then then the question to me like is funny, and so then like now I'm actually (laughs) what? What is what is humor? Why is that funny? Like what? And I like that you're lit up. Like I see your face, and then it spreads. Like I laugh, you laugh. Like it's beautiful. (laughs) And you know what? It's also a choice. Like when yeah, people are like, it's true. I did just lean into it. <laughs> right. Like when people are like, it's, I think my, my least favorite, my least patient place with people is when they're like, but I just had a breakup and I can't laugh right now. And I'm like, you can't laugh maybe like this minute, but what about the next minute? Oh, they do, okay, you're fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're, you yeah. will survive. Like we have the capacity. And for people who hear me, if they're like, wow, this bitch is impatient. Sometimes I am. But I'm not like I cover. I don't leak that out onto my clients. That's not my job or my friends. That's not that's not effective. But I'm human and I have my own judgments about things. Where I'm like, please understand that all of that you're feeling is a choice. You can choose to be sad, and you should to process if that's that's what you need. But then you can choose to have some humor. You can choose to also see the sky and be like, wow, how beautiful! And it has nothing to do with what you're experiencing. Like. It's a choice. You, you have many choices. Start exercising now. I And I think it's a choice also to, because I, I said that to a teacher recently, like, oh, I've been ignoring the pain I've been feeling because of, uh, yeah, relationship woes. And they're like, or you're just compartmentalizing really well, like in a healthy way, because you need to get other things done in your life too. To and I was like, work. oh, yeah, that too. Because, because, because like, Mel, I think you are also really good at, at like because when you were describing like yeah you're in a breakup right now and that's really sad but also laugh and see now you're okay it's both it's like yeah. yes both are true at the same time because you are sad on a level but you are also here in the moment where you can choose to laugh and you are also probably dealing with some deeper other emotions that are co- like so complex that who oh god who would 
Oh, I was listening to a, a podcast with Brene Brown and someone asked her, when are we going to stop um, like seeing emotions as like, here's how I feel. Like, it's just one thing. Yeah. Like, can we change our language to actually address like the multifaceted way we are? I don't know where, where that came from at the tail end of what we were just talking about, but like somehow that fits in to what we were just saying. <laughs> It does. There is room for so, you have to hold it all. You have to hold it all. Yeah. Uh wow. I feel like we went a lot of places. We're gonna have to have another conversation at some point. Oh, we will. We will. Um, but yeah, thank you for this one. And thank you for sharing um piece of your heart and soul and voice. My black little heart. I am. <laughs> I love your heart. It's so important. And Thank so you. I think, I mean, like just those things I mentioned, just the combination of your heart and your voice. I mean, your soul too, but like your, your heart, your heart and your voice, like that is a combination that I'm glad what that your story and whoever you are whoever you are mel came together to be mel the body witch because i think it is much needed your work is much needed and you are much needed and thank you thank you thank you i that feels so delicious in my body and i want you to know that i get emotional when i look at you also because i'm like wow what power at such a young age and to wrestle with it and i know it's scary but like don't stop for those, you know, for those of us who feel like we could, I know I'm going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. I get so easily, I'm very easily emotional. Like that's, thank God I can disconnect from my emotions. I wouldn't leave the house. I wouldn't function. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for being you. Lots of power. All right. Talk soon.